Hello and welcome again to this particular session. So we are beginning this session with what we call December 2022 examination paper. Just happened to receive from one of my students, Sneha, this particular paper. Thanks very much because I was not having this particular paper to be very honest with you. And uh, uh, then we come direct to the point. We start with section A. And if you have seen this particular section, section A, this is quite similar to the one which we did actually under December 2021 people, correct? And before I start what we call solving these questions, let me also make it clear, absolutely clear that holding company question of December 2021, I will do along with December 2022, correct? Because both questions are quite similar. So that is the reason. Anyway, this question, you can do it of your own very easy question, similar to the one which we did under what we call uh, December 2021 paper. Here, cost of the closing inventory is given to you. And even the name of the company is saying cost of the closing inventory of Malaya Limited, which is not a going concern. Even at the time, I stressed upon this particular fact that you have to keep an eye over these words, good, not a going concern. If any company which is not a going concern, in this case, rule is very really simple. The assets are reflected at net realizable value. Assets are reflected at net, net realizable value. Indirectly, it means you will have to compute the net realizable value. How you are going to compute? We are given that the cost of the asset is 5 lakh. So, I am going to write cost 5 lakh. And realizable value is 120%. First, I will compute 120% of this item. It will be, I think, it equal to 6 lakh. This is realizable value. But we have to find out net realizable value. In order to find out net realizable value, I will have to subtract 5% realization expenses. I will take 5% of 6 lakh, that is equal to 30,000. So, net realizable value will be equal to 5 lakh 70,000. I am not having the answers, honestly speaking. So, I am simply having the question paper at this moment. So, 5 lakh 70,000 should be your answer. I do not know what answer institute has given, but this should be your answer. And then the next question, next question says that property, plant and equipment appeared at rupees 50 lakh in the trial balance of Nero Company Limited, Limited, which is not a going concern again. Again, this company is not a going concern and uh, it has a policy of charging depreciation. And once again, net realizable value, because it is not a going concern. It is not a going concern. Once again, it is written in similar fashion. You are going to actually solve this particular question. You simply write cost. Cost is 50 lakh. Simply multiply it with what we call realizable value. The realizable value just about what we call 80%. It is 50 lakhs. So 50 lakhs into 80% I think will be equal to 40 lakhs. 40 lakhs is your realizable value. And then you subtract from realization expenses. Realization expenses will be equal to 2 lakh. I think this question was also there under December 2021 paper. Correct. So 38 lakh. Question is simply asking you how much depreciation will be taken to the PNL. Of course, cost is this much, and you have to now show this asset at 38 lakh. So 12 lakh will become your answer under point number two. Then we move over to the third part. Third part is straight away. This particular question is available under AS2 notes of ours. If you have gone through accounting standard AS2, I have done this question so many times over there. But anyway, just to remind you regarding the AS2. As you know, AS2 deals with inventories, correct? And you know inventories comprises of what? It comprises of raw material, it comprises of work in progress, and it comprises of finished goods. Finished goods. This is how. Now, as far as measurement and recognition of finished goods is concerned, finished goods are reflected at lower of cost or selling price, net selling price we call it. Net selling price. Now, in this question, the last part says that, C part of this question says that 180 units of finished product of Z Limited, there are 180 units of finished product of Z Limited and cost incurred is 3300. So, first I will compute the cost 180 into 3300. 180 into 3300, how much it will be equal to? So, if I multiply 180 with 3300, 180 into 3300 that is equal to 594000 as per my calculation 594000 now 
Expected selling selling price is 3500 but we have to incur some expenses in the form of brokerage. This is also given. So now I will compute the net selling price. In order to compute the net selling price, first I will compute the selling price. The selling price will be 180 into 3500. 180 into 3500. Now 180 into 3500 will be how much? That is equal to 180 into 3000. Mm -hmm. 180 into 3500 that is equal to 6,30,000 and from 6,30,000 I am going to subtract the brokerage. The brokerage is given to us as 10%. 10% that is equal to 63,000. So if I will subtract 63,000 from 6,30,000 that is equal to 5,67,000. So out of these two value the fixed cost, uh, sorry, finished product will be reflected at 5,67,000 because this is the lower value. Now we come over to work in progress. Work in progress means units which are still incompleted, that is partly finished units. Question says that 100 units of partly finished goods in the process of producing product Z. Cost we have incurred so far is equal to 2,000 units. So first of all, I am going to find the, find the cost of these units. What will be the cost? The cost will be 100 units into 100 units of partly finished goods in the process of producing product Z limited and cost incurred till date is 2000. So till date we have already incurred cost 2000. But in order to finish them, question has given further that we shall require 1300 more cost. First let me write. Total cost which we have incurred is equal to 2 lakh, that is 100 into 2000. Then we will have to incur at the rate of 1300 units to finish them. It is known as basically conversion cost. 100 into this, it will be equal to 100 into 1300, that is equal to 1 lakh 30,000. So this will be considered as cost, total cost of work in progress. Now total cost of work in progress is 3 lakh 30,000, no doubt about that. However, we will compare it with net realizable value. Actually, net realizable value is nothing but your net selling price, honestly speaking. Because these units will get converted, ultimately now these units will become finished units. You can say their cost will be 3,30,000. We will have to compare them with the selling price. We know that selling price is 3,500. 3, correct? But we will have to incur 10% brokerage cost, that is 350, 10% is brokerage cost, yes. So net selling price will be equal to 3050. So you will multiply 100 units with this price to find out the net selling price. So that will be equal to 3050 into 100, that is equal to 3,5000. 3,5000. That means out of these two costs, this cost will be considered for work in progress. This will be considered as cost of finished goods. In fact, at this value, should I say that finished, cost, uh, finished goods will be recognized, work in progress will be recognized at this value. And as far as raw material recognition is concerned, so many times I told earlier while taking the lecture that in order to find out at what value raw material will be reflected in the books, we compare, first of all, we see to it that where raw material are going to be used. Ultimately, raw material is going to be used in product, in, in the production of product jet. Correct? <clears throat> now, we have seen, as far as product Z is concerned, we have already seen that raw materials are going to be ultimately used in production of product Z and as far as product Z is concerned we have seen that its selling price is 5 lakh sorry its selling price is 5 lakh 67000 which is less than its cost price which is less than its cost price 5 lakh 90000 if you remember in the very first session of AS2 i have already talked about this particular fact that how to find out the raw material cost Correct, ultimately at what figure raw material will be reflected in the books. In order to know that, we compare where the raw material are going to be used, first of all. That being, first of all, we have to see that raw material are going to be used in the finished product. Then we see the selling price and the cost price of the finished product. If selling price happens to be less than 
cost price, then raw material will be reflected at replacement cost. At replacement cost, this is the rule. Now, raw material units are 52. So, and their replacement cost is given to you here as 450. So, you will multiply 52 with 450. So, ultimately, this will be your value. 52 into 450, that is equal to 23,400. So, in this particular case, you will sum up all these three items to get your answer. Is it clear to you? Because ultimately, question is asking you, what is the cost of the total inventory as at 31st 3, 2022 as per relevant accounting standard? So, this will become, as the cost of the finished goods, this will become cost of your work in progress, sorry, Work in progress cost is 3,5,000 and this is your cost of raw material. Is it clear to you or not? So, this is how you are going to do this particular question. Now, as, per, as far as part 4 is concerned, that is related to your knowledge, especially with respect to the fact that how well you have gone through AS4. Correct? Because all these points more or less are part of AS4. If we have gone through that, AS4 actually deals with events occurring after the date of the balance sheet. Now here, question says that because we have seen under AS4, there are two types of events, whether adjusting events or non-adjusting events. Here, data against whom insolvency pro proceedings were instituted prior to 31st March is declared insolvent on July 21. 2022. So, it is a case of event taking place after the date of the balance sheet, but it will be reflected in the financials which we are going to prepare for the financial year ending 31st March 2022. So, this item will be considered. Correct? It will be called adjusting event. A theft of cash of 1 crore by cashier in January 2022 was detected on 17th of May 2022. Even this particular item will be considered for preparing the financial. A major production plant got destroyed by fire on August 28, 2022. Even this particular item will be considered for preparing the financial. If the factory of the entrepreneur is permanently sealed on September 2020 under the Supreme Court because it was polluting the industry. That means some evidences were there on the date of what we call preparation of the fire uh, on the day reporting date. If some events evidences were there on the reporting date, it means some evidences conditions were existing. So it will again be considered as a case of adjusting event. In fact, all the four items will be considered as what we call events which will be taken into account while finalizing the account on 30th of September 2022 because here date of finalization given is this one. Is it clear to you or not? Now, as far as part 5 is concerned, part 5, Saloni and Sweta Gupta provides you the following information. Till the previous year, FIFO was used in measuring the cost of the inventory. See, change in methodology of inventory is considered as a change in accounting policy. Again, this is standard. Basically, these, this particular question deals with how well you are deft with AS5 because all these points and AS1 also because these two things change in policy, change in estimates, change in methods you should be quite well aware of. In fact, in this particular case, it will be considered as a case of change in policy. Correct? It is a case of change in accounting policy because earlier we were following FIFA method. Now we have moved over to some other method that is weighted average method. In this case, in this particular case, what is given to us is that till the previous year, provision for doubtful debts we were, we were creating at the rate of 2% and in the current year, we have changed it to 3%. It is not a case of change in accounting policy. It is a case of change in, uh, it is a case of change in accounting estimate. So, this is not a case of change in accounting policy. This is a case of change in accounting policy. It is a case of change in estimate. Accounting estimate. Is it clear to you? Then, again, till the previous year, the furniture was depreciated on a straight line basis, taking the useful life as five years. However, now we have decided to depreciate the furniture by taking the useful life as what we call eight years. Again, it will be considered as a change in estimate because we keep on estimating and revising our estimates. So, it is again a case of estimate, not a case of change in policy. And now, here it is given that Till the previous year, machinery was depreciated on a straight line basis and from the current year, it is a case of change in method, not a case of change in accounting policy. So, only first part will be your answer because question is asking you which should be treated as change in accounting policy. Question number part 6, 
part 6 actually says a property costing 25 lakh is ready for use and it is bought on 1st of April 2021 and put to use on 1st April 2022. So we have put it to use on 1st of April 2022 and total physical life is 20 years. Now please try to understand this particular point and the cost of the machinery is actually 25 lakh. So cost of the machinery first of all I am going to write this is the cost of the machinery 25 lakh. And we estimated its total useful life as 20 years. However, company consider it likely that it will sell the property after 10 years. Even though we are estimating that this particular machinery will have a life of 20 years, but we are contemplating and we are under the impression that we are going to sell it after what we call 10 years. So, in fact, I will depreciate it for 10 years only. Further, it is estimated that total life. Uh, it is estimated that total physical life is 20 years. However, the company consider it likely that it will sell the property after 10 years, and the estimated residual value in 10 years' time is rupees five lakh. An estimated residual value after 10 years period. That means for this particular entity, life of this machine will be considered as 10 years. So accordingly, we are going to charge the depreciation. Now 20 lakh divided by 10 is equal to 2 lakh. That means we have decided that we are going to provide or depreciate this particular machinery at the rate of 10%. Estimated, then further it is uh, uh, said uh, that after charging depreciation for 4 years. Now, <clears throat> we purchase the machinery for 25 lakh. And then we depreciated it for 4 years. So depreciation for 1 year is equal to 2 lakh. For 4 years it will be equal to 8 lakh. That means at the end of the 4th year this machinery is commanding a book value of 17 lakh. We may say so. Further it is written that and the property. Further it is written that after charging depreciation for 4 years. The remaining useful life of the property is assessed as 8 years. And the residual value is re-estimated at rupees 9 lakh. And further the property is revalued upward by 80,000. After the end of the fourth year, what happened? First of all, a revaluation took place. On account of that value of the machinery has gone up to 17 lakh 80,000. That means at the end of the fourth year, this machinery is having a carrying amount of 17 lakh 80,000. But now we are under an impression, we are under an imp impression that this machinery has got still a remaining life of eight years correct and we re-estimated the residual value the residual value is estimated at rupees nine lakh so that means my depreciation for fifth year will be this much in fact from fourth year onwards my depreciation should be this this much 17 lakh eighty thousand my eighty thousand 17 lakh 80 minus 9 lakh divided by 8 and it is equal to 1 lakh 10,000. So that means when I will reach the end of the fourth year, sorry, end of the fifth year because we are already at the end of the fourth year, I will charge a depreciation of 1 lakh 10,000. That means at the end of the fifth year, this machinery is having a book value of this much at the end of fifth year. At the end of fifth year, this machinery is having a value of 16 lakh 70,000. Now, question is asked, question is saying that from sixth year, from sixth year means at the end of the sixth year, always in accounts it means, company decides to adopt written down value method by charging the depreciation at the rate of 20%. So, now at the end of sixth year, now we will reach the end of the sixth year. That means in the sixth year, I am going to charge depreciation at the rate of 20% of this. Now, 20% of this will be equal to how much? Written down value is 16,70,000 into 20%. So, 3,34,000 will become the depreciation for the sixth year. 3,34,000. Now, let me see. Unfortunately, 3,34,000 is not there. So, I will write here none of the above. Logically, this should be your answer. If this answer is given, then answer D will be considered as correct answer because in the sixth year, your depreciation amount should be 3,34,000. Now, 
as far as seventh part is concerned, seventh part. Junjunwala Group had property, plant and equipment with a book value of 25 lakh on 31st of March 2022. Junjunwala, correct? Uh, as on 31st of March 2022. Junjunwala is having a property, plant and equipment as on 31st. 2022 at 25 lakh last year that means last year must be this one prior to this one last year property was revalued by revalued upwards by 3 lakh now last year we might have done the revaluation and we might have found this property gone up by 3 lakh so whenever the property gets increases logically the logically the entry which we pass is relevant asset account debit to revaluation reserve account so that means there is a balance in revaluation reserve to the extent of 3 lakh because last year we did a revaluation and there was some increment so that increment must have been credited to revaluation reserve account because that is normal policy last year property was revalued upward by 3 lakh and increase of debt asset was recognized in the revaluation surplus account revaluation reserve or surplus account are one and same thing now question says that on 31st of 3 2022 the carrying amount the book value is 25 lakh but fair value as a result of revaluation done on 31st of march 2022 now we again did a revaluation on 31st 3 2022 and we found that fair value is now just about 21 lakh that means in the current year book value is 22 but fair value is 21 so there is a loss to the extent of 4 lakh normally normally loss is always debited to profit and loss account normally if any loss takes place on account of revaluation normally i'm talking about then it is debited to profit and loss account so my entry should have been profit and loss account debit to this but if you remember under as10 we have talked about as10 and india as16 are one and same thing in both the standards while lecturing i told about this particular fact that if you have a balance in revaluation reserve then this loss must of all first be set off against that that because we are having three lakh worth of balance in revaluation reserve so out of four lakh i am going to set off three lakh against the revaluation reserve and 1 lakh against the profit and loss account and question is asking you calculate the amount to be recognized in profit and loss account so out of this yes profit and loss account should be debited with rupees 1 lakh this should be your correct option now in this question what is given to this question i have done under this is absolutely same same question i need not require to actually do it again this is question number one of december 2021 part a Please see December 2. In fact, I have taken there about 5 or 6. The December 2021 paper has been analyzed in 5 part or 6 part. You please look at part 1. I have explained this question over there. This is similar to December 21. I think it was question number 1. Correct? Sina Limited made the following payments. I told you. In order to understand this particular question, you have a good knowledge regarding what we call AS26 and of course the corresponding india s2 because you should know that software i am writing one software which is 60 lakh it is generally written off in five years so that when you are going to write 12 lakh 60 lakh we spend to acquire a website for a period of eight years it given i will write here too It seems that we should divide 60 lakh by 8, but again, standard says that website should be written off within 5 years. So, again, you are going to write off 12 lakhs. And then we, it is given that 60 lakh to acquire, this is third point, 60 lakhs to acquire copyright for a period of 15 years. Now, copyright, we spent, this is third, 60 lakh, again, I will divide it by 10, 6 lakh because maximum period is 10 years unless and until a period greater than 10 years is justified by having authentic actuarial revaluation certificate otherwise we have to write it off within 10 years then question says that we spent 60 lakh to acquire goodwill of a firm 
Now, goodwill of a firm is there. This is point number four. So, 60 lakhs divided by 10 because it, it is goodwill of a firm. This much you are going to write off. Then, question says that uh, 60 lakhs to, this is point number five. 60 lakhs to acquire goodwill arising under amalgamation in the nature of purchase. Any goodwill which we any goodwill which arise on account of amalgamation in the nature of purchase as a rule should be written off within five years. So 12 lakhs we will write off. Then point number six, we spend 60 lakhs to acquire a patent for a period of five years. As far as patents are concerned, this is point number six, this is point number five. As far as patents are concerned, as per the life given, they should be written off. So their life is given five years. So I will write it off within five years. 12. Question also says that 60 lakhs to acquire stock exchange membership right. This is your point number 7. So point number 7 you will write here 60 lakh divided by 10. It, it should be written off within 10 years. 6 lakhs. Then question says that point number 6, 7 then it, this is point number 8. Rupees 60 lakh to the state government towards the cost of roads built in vicinity of the project for the purpose of carrying material to the site. The road so built is property of the state government. Because we paid 60 lakh to the state government because state government has built the road within the vicinity of the project. However, point is that this particular road does not belong to us. So this amount of 60 lakhs will be debited to profit and loss account in full. This point number 8, entire amount 60 lakh will be debited to profit and loss account. Then question says that 60 lakh we spent towards extensive special initial advertising campaign for the new product. This is your point number 9. Even this particular amount, special, advertise, special advertising expenses, if we incur heavy, heavy initial advertising expenses, correct? Especially to launch a new product will have to be expensed in full, 60 lakhs. And similarly, 60 lakhs we have spent to develop a drug to treat the cancer. But recognition criteria is not met. So that is the reason even this particular expenditure will be expensed. So how question is asking what amount you are going to debit to profit and loss account. So whatever I have written this 12 lakh, 12 lakh, 6 lakh, 6 lakh, 12 lakhs, 12 lakh, 6 lakh and this 60 lakh, 60 lakh, 60 lakh, you add them up and this should be your answer. Correct? Now, next one is Again, this question I have solved under this December, 2020, December 2021 paper. Kindly look over there because I have solved this question under December 2021 at great detail. In this question, this question is related to AS29. This question is also available in our notes. Correct? Tashika Limited, question says, uh, Tashika Limited, an engineering goods company provides after sales warranty for two years to its customers. Based on the past experiences, the company has the following policy for making warranties on an amount for the remaining, for the remaining balance warranty period. What it means, and question is also, question has also provided that a period of warranty remaining is less than one year, then 2% provision is made. If remaining warranty period is more than one year, then 3% provision is made. For example, just to make the point a little bit more clear, if I am going to uh, raise an invoice on 19th of January 2020 for rupees 40,000, correct? First of all, question is asking us, what is the demand of the question? First of all, let, let's have a look. Calculate the amount to be debited to profit and loss account for the year ended 31st March 2022. So, in this case, our current year happens to be 31st March 2022. 31st March 2022. Correct? Now, first of all, you have to create provisions. First, try to understand. On 31st of March 2022, how, how I am going to create the provision? I might have sold an item, raising the invoice means I might have sold an item on 19th of January 2020 and amount is 40,000. 
Now, if you look carefully, if you are selling an item on 19th of January, that means on 19 1 2020, one year will get elapsed. One year will get elapsed. And then, and then on 19 1 2021, second year will also get elapsed. That means your warranty period is for two years only. No. So, if you have sold the item on 19th of January 2020, it means the first year of the warranty will end here and second year, second year of warranty period will end over this particular date. However, when question is asking how much provision we have to create on 31st of 3, 2022, on account of this, I will have to compute the provision on 31st of 3, 2021 also. Why? Because it will be considered as opening provision for the year 31st, 3, 2022. And whatever provision which we are going to create till this date, then we will take the difference. That will be the answer. So I have to find out provision on 31st, 3, 2021 and 31st, 3, 2022. Now, please pay attention. I want to compute the provision on 31st 3 2021 with respect to this item. Now just pay attention. On 31st of 3 2021, if I am going to create the provision on 31st of 3 2021, please pay attention over here in this particular fact. I have to find out what is the remaining period. What is the remaining period? What my point is, you try to understand in this manner, then you will be able to understand. First, have a look over 15th October 2021. If you will look over 15th October 2021 and suppose I am computing provision on 31st 3, 2021. Moreover, this invoice has been raised on 15th October 2021. I cannot compute provision on 31st of 3, 2021 because this date is after this date. That means 15th October will fall somewhere here. And I want to create the provision on this date. If I have sold an item on 15th of October 2021, that means this much of period only has gone by. That means on this date, the remaining warranty period, you have to find out the remaining warranty period. So remaining warranty period obviously is more than one year. Are you getting my point or not? So when I'm going to compute the provision on 31st of 3 to 31st of 3, 2022, I will compute on 90,000 at 3%. Because if more than one year, I will have to apply 3%. That is equal to 2,700. Now, similarly, I want to compute the provision on 29th of January. Sorry, for an item which I sold on 29th of January 2021. Now, please pay attention. If I have sold an item on 29th of January, then the nearest accounting year which will end that will be equal to 31st of 3 2021 after january february 21 march 21 so this is the nearest accounting year which will fall from this date this to this particular date see please pay attention from this particular date to this particular date after i think only three months are remaining isn't it or not on 31st of 3 2021 how much provision I will create on 25,000? Could you tell me? If I have sold you an item on 29th of January 2021 and two years warranty period is still there, out of that two years, only two months have gone by when I am preparing the or when I am doing the accounting on 31st of 3, 2021. Isn't it or not? So that means on this date, the remaining warranty period with respect to this particular item is more than one year. So that is the reason on this date, I am going to create a provision of 3% that is equal to 750. I hope you are getting a point. Now again, on 31st of 3, 2022, I will create a provision on this item because ultimately we have to find out provision on 31st of 3, 2022. Again, I will create a provision. Now, when I will reach 31st 3, 2022, the remaining warranty period of this item will be less than one year because two months have already gone by and, and when I will reach 29th of January 2021, near about 12 months more have gone by. 
So on this particular date, hardly two, three months are remaining. So that is the reason now on this date, with respect to this particular item, remaining warranty period is less than 12 months. So provision will be equal to 500 only. Provision will be equal to 500 only. And problem now coming over to this particular item. As far as this particular item is concerned, I will first erase it out. Just have a look over here. 19 January 2020. The nearest accounting year will fall. The nearest accounting year will be 31st of March 2020. Actually, we are not concerned with that because we have to take care of current year and previous current year. And this is 31st, 3, 2020. But just to make the point clear, I have sold you an item on 19th of January 2020. And within one or two months after that, the accounting year will, the end of the accounting year will be reached. That means when I am going to reach at this accounting year, the remaining warranty period will be more than one year. So quite obviously, I will create a provision at the rate of 3%, but I am not concerned with this particular. Now, I want to compute the provision on 31st 3, 2021 because it is important for us to know the amount of provision on 31st 3, 2001 because current year end is 31st 3, 2022. So, we need to have the opening provision also for the current year. But anyway, now, if I on the same asset which I sold on this particular date, that means one year will finish somewhere 19-1-2021, correct? That means warranty period of one year is already gone by because two years warranty we are providing, you know. And then again two, three more months will elapse when I will reach the end of 31st 3, 2021. That means when I will reach 31st 3, 2021, the remaining warranty period with respect to this item is less than 12 months. So that is why on this date, I am going to create a provision of 2% that is equal to 800. Is it clear to you? Now I am going to ask you what, what, what is the provision on 31st 3, 2021? See here, on 31st 3, 2021, we have a provision of 800 on this item and on this item 25,000 that is equal to 750. So this was, this is the provision and no provision with respect to this item. So 1550 is the total provision on 31st 3, 2022. Now what is the total provision on 31st 3, 2022? One is 2700 with respect to this item. And then 500 with respect to this item. And we are not going to create provision for this item on 31st of 3, 2022 because remaining period is zero. Remaining warranty period is not there. Its two year will elapse before we will reach 31st 3, 2022. So no remaining period. So no provision on this item. So we may say that total provision on 31st of 3, 2021 is this much. And total provision at the end of the year, current year is 3,200. That means we have to increase the provision by 1650. This should be your answer. Yes, it, this should be your answer. And it, you can study this question at great length under what we call December 2021. Even this question also I have discussed over there. Even this particular question and under December 2021, almost 21 is repeated in 21, in 2022. Actually, some information is given that an entity is, f just wait, an entity is having lots of cases against it, correct? These are the information related to the first 10 cases and this is the information related to the remaining 5 cases. While explaining and discussing the December 2021 paper, I also explained over there that all you have to do is that you have to ignore the cases which you are going to win. Because if you are going to win, then you, you need not require to create any provision. You will create provision only when there are chances of losing the case. Now, question says that in this case, you may lose 30%. 0.3 means 30% chances are there. 
and if you will lose the case then you will have to pay 90000 per case per case this information is related to per case because below it is written each case is independent so please pay attention what i have to do here if i will lose this then 30 percent of 90,000 into 10 because 10 cases 9 lakh total compensation I will have to give I will have to give but only 30 percent chances are there so this will be the provision I will create similarly in case of this one I will compute like this 10 percent into 2 lakh into 10 cases correct and similarly for the remaining 5 cases 30 percent into 60,000 into 5. This much amount you may have to pay. So, you will have to create provision to the extent of this sign. Similarly, 20 percent into 1 lakh into 5 cases. So, all in all, this will be your answer, whatever it is. Correct? As far as section B is concerned that we will discuss in the next session and in the next session I will do complete, there are, there are some mistakes also in this particular question. We will finish this particular and then I will take what we call this particular question AS 14 and okay rest of the things I am going to discuss in the next session. So for the for today it is enough and holding holding company question I will do along with the holding company question of this particular chapter because more or less everything is same. Why I want to because here in December 2022 the information is correct with respect to holding company whereas information with respect to December 2021 is either incorrect or incomplete. I will show you when I will do the complete solution next time. Correct? It it is consuming my hell of a time for you actually you seems that it is 40 30 minutes or more than enough but you do not know actually i have to spend near about four or five hours uh, yes i'm talking about the reason being is that so many printing mistakes are there so that is creating a hell of a problem for me too but anyway on my side actually i'm trying to give you the best so looking forward to have your cooperation but at the same time th thank you so much to shreya 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 was the name who sent me this paper if any one of you are having uh uh, that is January 23 paper, I th oh, sorry, uh, June 2023 paper, uh, sorry, I'm talking about June 23 paper, December 2023 paper, I have already, 22 paper, I have already received and after that, is there any paper uh, has taken place? June 2023, I think, isn't it? So June 23, no question. So no paper after this will remain. Then after that, I will do uh, some important questions for you. Some guest question, which I feel may strike in the examination. But anyway, for today, it's enough. And uh, so I'll see you in the next session.